In this video, we talk about compound or nested data structures in Python. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, if you haven't watched the previous videos on lists, tuples, sets, dictionaries, etc., I'd recommend going back and watching those first because this takes things to like the next level. And if you don't understand the basic concepts of those items, then this is gonna be like, whoa. So anyway, let's go ahead and set up a variable that is a list of tuples. So let's do that real quick. We'll do stocks and equals to, and a list, remember, is brackets. And then tuples are the, the parentheses. So we'll do our first one, and we'll say that we got our Apple stock here. And we'll just say it was $20. Now, of course, this is not real prices. We're just doing it for example. So we got Apple, it closed at $20. Uh, we got, let's say Tesla, and it closed at $30. Uh, we got, what else is there? Microsoft, it closed at $40. And then we also have Amazon that closed at $50. When you go ahead and print stocks. So there is our list of tuples of stocks. All right, now we can go ahead and kind of break this down in different ways. So if we want to go ahead and print the first tuple in our list, we can do that with the index, right? Because lists are ordered. So we can print the uh, stocks one or zero, I'm sorry. And you see we print the first tuple in our list. Alternatively, we could print the second tuple in our list and so on using indexes just like normal. Now, if we want to print like the, the Apple symbol, we could go ahead and do that as well. So to do it, we'd print stocks and we want the first tuple in our list, which is right there. And then inside of the tuple, we want the first item inside of it. So we could do another zero. Print that real quick and boom, just like that, we have the stock symbol. So pretty cool, right? We can like, by doing multiple brackets and indices, we can kind of go like a different level deep, deeper each, each indice, right? Hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, let's say we want to go ahead and iterate through our entire list and the tuples inside of our list. We could do that too with a for loop. So you do for stock in stocks, and we will say print, and let's just go with stock real quick. Let's see what the heck happens there. All right, so it's printing out our tuples when we do something like that. So we know from previous experience that if we wanna print out the values inside of our tuples, we can use the indes, indices, yes, indices. So let's go ahead and make some changes here. So print, and we'll say stock, and the squirrely brackets. Again, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be using the format method here. So stock, and price, and blah blah blah, and then dot format, and we will do the first one is stock, and the indice of zero, which would be our symbol and then we have stock in this of one which is the amount the price right uh, let's try and run it real quick and boom just like that we went through our list of tuples pulling out the stock symbol right there as well as the price of the stock so that's pretty cool stuff, right? Hopefully you can see how some of this stuff is coming together and how you can iterate through it and pull out exactly what you want from your lists, sets, tuples, dictionaries, etc. I got another compound data structure example where we're gonna be using a dictionary. Uh, so let me wipe this out real quick. And let's say we got cart. So back to our shopping cart examples. And I'm gonna go ahead and construct a dictionary. And our first key is gonna be a date. So let's just say 12 January 2020 is our key. And then I can go ahead and throw a dictionary into the value here. So we can say we had apples, apples. And we had two, we bought two that day. 
And then we bought pairs. And we bought four pairs that day. And we bought orange oranges. And let's say we bought six oranges that day. And then on the next day, we went to the market. We went 19 Jan 2020, so sometime in the future. And let's go with apples. I cannot spell apples when y'all are watching me. And we bought uh, six apples that day, uh, pears. We bought, I don't know, two pears that day. And then oranges, we bought 12 of that day. Let me back up this squirrely bracket and come on down here. I'm gonna print cart real quick, print our dictionary of dictionaries. And we got a little issue here. And basically I got an issue because I did not separate it by a comma here. So let me run it again. And there we go. So now we have a dictionary with dictionaries inside of them. And if we want to print certain items in the dictionary, we can do it like this. So we got cart and we can pick our date here. So 12 Jan, so our key, 2020. So that's our first key. We run that real quick and we see that it gives us this dictionary right there. And then we can of course go into that dictionary with another key. So let's see how many apples we bought that day. Apples, run it real quick. And so we know we bought two apples on 12 Jan 2020 versus 19. January. We bought six apples that day. Now, as you might remember from the dictionaries video, if something doesn't exist, like we wanted to see how many grapes we bought, and we run it, we get an error. So that's not good. Usually we want to use the get method with dictionaries. So to do the get method, we can do, let me change this back to apples real quick. So we could do print cart dot get and 19 Jan 2020 dot get and we'll do apples just to be safe real quick so we got six apples but if I said grapes ran it we would get none so there's our none so instead of getting error message and breaking our entire program uh, we get a none and we can do something with that none uh, now one thing also to note though when you do like a, a nested dictionary is if you get something wrong here like it does not exist then even if this other value exists, you're gonna get an error message. And I'll have another video on error handling coming up soon, so we'll figure out a way to handle this, but at least as long as your first key value is correct, uh, and then your second key could be wrong. You could have something wrong and your code will not explode and the world will not end. So I know that that was really quick. I just wanted to show you some of the compound data set structures that we could go ahead and do. And hopefully that got your mind spinning, things are thinking, wheels are turning. And that is it for this video. If you learned something, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope that you have a great rest of the day.